The 2020 Austrian Grand Prix had it all. Car retirements, safety cars, and an unexpected podium. In these turbulent times, this was exactly the race that we needed. Let's jump the start. We finally made it. 2020 finally started off. We uh, completed our first race weekend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're in. And um, uh, let's take a look back with our a quick uh, race weekend review. Gentlemen, a short view back to the park. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, infamous question about, uh, you know, if a monkey was in a car, blah, blah, blah. But uh, just going back, I wanted to start off, just kind of take a look at the practice sessions it was um almost business as usual with mercedes uh one two in all of the sessions um <laughs> max was also competitive top three in two of the three sessions and then the other major surprise was that ferrari kind of nowhere to be seen yancy what uh what happened what happened to your team <laughs> man <laughs> I don't know. I, I I expected better from them. Uh, I guess what they were saying was true. The we all, engine. <laughs> we all thought that they were really sandbagging, and um, everybody thought that. Yeah, but I listen. They didn't have a good car at testing, and they 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 you, point that you, out. You remember testing? Well, I don't remember crap and testing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, what you. <laughs> Before the weekend even started, they did say that they were not bringing any updates to the car this the first for the first two races in Austria. Uh, that they were bringing the majority of the updates for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Why? Third. Yeah, but it makes sense because the Italian region, especially where they're in, was hit so hard by uh, COVID coronavirus. They yeah. weren't able to work in the way that they normally would be able to work. Yeah, and they, they shut down the factory for a long time. And they knew that they had a fundamental problem with that car. They figured out the problem. It's just getting the updates to fixing the problem. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. Uh, last time they brought a major upgrade was last year in Singapore, and they wound up winning the race. I'm hoping that it's going to be the same result. Okay. But they didn't look very good this weekend at all well this weekend to me it looked like the cheating engine that we keep mentioning is true because they were really off super off and i didn't like that <laughs> well we always want ferrari you know no i don't also i don't yeah, so then why are you upset for <laughs> we want competition. i'm upset because of secrecy <laughs> <laughs> the other surprise is that coming out of coming out of um i guess testing in february that's how long ago it was that racing point, tracing point, actually, tracing point. <laughs> they, uh, they, you know, they looked strong in testing and they continued to look strong here in, in, in practice in the, in the first couple of practice sessions. So that was a trend coming out as well. Um, on to qualifying, uh, kind of uneventful. The Q1 was a little bit uneventful. Q2 uh, qualifying two, you see a bit of a shock with uh, Sebastian Vettel out. He finished 11th just below the cutoff line there in, in Q2. Uh, in going forward into Q3, then you have uh, Boras being the man at Austria like he's been the last couple of years. He sets the fastest time in his first Q3 run. And then beyond that, when they all go back out to the, I guess, the final run on Q3, He's on his way to complete the lap first, but then he spins out and goes out into the gravel, causing a yellow flag, which affects everyone down the line. And we could talk about how By the way, he was killing on that lap. Too. He was absolutely that lap just, he was just flying. He just loves that track. I think so. Yeah, but that goes to show you how good Mercedes is. That the man can literally spin out on his final attempt at a qualifying lap and still, still get yeah. pulled. <laughs> Well, he oh, yellow flagged everybody else. So everybody behind him that was coming fast as well couldn't do much. Yeah, but nobody, I don't think anybody was even close to him. It was, I mean, he was pretty good. I mean, maybe maybe Lewis, but uh, Mercedes was in, what well, they were in their own league. They, you think so? They were literally in their own league. <laughs> yeah. It, it was. It's the typical, you know, I, I remember I, I mentioned last podcast that I was excited because 
uh, that the season was starting in Austria because Mercedes struggles over. struggles yeah. here. But uh, I'm just disappointed. I want to see somebody else win. <laughs> so I have That's the data. I have the data here. Top two Mercedes were Bottas and Hamilton. They were both a half second faster than third place That's in crazy. qualifying. Max Verstappen. <laughs> That's a massive and gap. Max still was and Max well. was was being Max. He loves that track himself. Fourth place in qualifying, the shocker, Lando Norris, McLaren. He um, had a terrific race weekend, uh, but he really kind of set the tone for himself there. Fifth, Alexander Albon. Sixth, tracing point, Sergio Perez. Tracing point. <laughs> Just killing it. And then I told you guys that car was going to be good. The other shot, the shocker that we had originally talked about, just Ferrari, Charles Leclerc, seventh place in Q3. Rounding out the top 10 is Sainz, Stroll, and uh, Ricardo. Quote right. of the weekend. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. Uh, your P, what, P10, P10, yeah, P10. 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 That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. He had a, he said, he even said it, he taught, he thought he put together a really, really good lap. And for, it to, for him to come out in P10, he was surprised. No, he was sure, like you said, they don't, they don't have the complete package right now. I hope the upgrades fix it for them, but I absolutely hope so. Right now, they're, they're not looking too I, bueno. I, <laughs> I absolutely hope so. So, we just talked about how qualifying ended, which turned out not to be how the grid actually lined up to start the race. Uh, due to the yellow flag and um, I guess Hamilton not slowing down with Quick the yellow enough. flag. Quick, quickly enough. You're right, Ruby. Uh, he ended up receiving a three-place grid penalty. I ended up having him start at fifth, which put Norris into third place starting grid and uh, Alexander Albon into fourth. Which... So- Made the start very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yes. So at the start of the race, it was a clean takeoff where Lando Norris was fighting just like he was last year in uh, Austria. Who, he, again, he seems to love that track. And Lewis Hamilton making his way up the field. Ruben, do you want to jump in here and kind of give us a little bit of a narrative of how those first couple of laps went? It was actually surprising to me how the laps went because it was they were super clean. There was very little, you know, very little bumping from from all the, the rest of the It driver. seemed like they were really careful going exactly. through those I think they were very turns. They were turkey, taking very well care of the car well, at the I, beginning of the race. You know, the, the, you know not too much pushing were, around and stuff like that. There was, there's, there's been a lot of talk as far as you can't get a DNF because it's a short season, so every point is very. Oh valuable. my god! Okay, I got you. So people are yes. people are like trying to yeah. stay on on point on on watching everything as a package Correct. kind of stuff. Right. I mean, the the thing that that caught my attention at the beginning of the race was the the racing points with the with the smoke. They were doing that in practice as well, and they kept smoking, not smoking yeah. the tires. The the engine kept smoking. I wonder what that's due to. Is it because they're running, you know, running Mercedes last year's car, you know, and they're not getting the same package as Mercedes has up front. So they always have trouble there. And they still probably have to a couple of wiggles to iron out. But that was pretty much that what caught my attention the most right. at the beginning of the race. It was the racing point smoking out. Like, it and reminds engine. me of they the, kept doing it pretty much on almost every turn. Reminds me of the Ferrari engine um maybe two years ago, I want to say, where every time they started up the car. Yes, it, it was a it huge was smoke puff of smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if it's like they're burning. The, the Ferrari was like burning. Yeah, that's oil. the same thing that the Mercedes is doing is burning oil. Yeah, I don't know what. Maybe that. that maybe really shooting was. out the excess on them. You know, to, to the mouth. I thought. I, I thought that they were. I mean, they they weren't for a really good weekend, and I'm rooting for them. But I thought they were gonna like conk out, <laughs> like the engine was gonna go. Yeah, I thought I thought the oil was not gonna be enough to finish the race, and they it, were gonna it just seemed burn like the every every time they broke, they broke into the they went into the braking zone to make a turn. It was just like a big puff yeah, of smoke. Yeah, since we're not getting the full attention on those two cars, it would look if you would to you it would look like the you know the lacking of the tires. But no, it was actually the engine puffing smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It, it was, looked like the engine was having a cigar. So every time we slow <laughs> down, I puff out. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about you, but my heart was racing because um, I just seen those cars go around the track. Man. No, it was it's super been exciting for the beginning of the first race. That, that was, man? yeah, that's was, on a, that, that, you know, to talk about that. On a I think I, I made the comment. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. When they were lining up, exactly, like, yeah. I can't believe well, this is happening. Really happening. This is really happening. Because yeah. we thought we were going to get that in Australia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was a little weird to see it with no crowd, but it was still very exciting to see. Uh, the start of the race led into... And lap 11, we saw Max Verstappen, who was cruising along in second place and we know is competitive. And he was on medium tires to be able to start kind of challenging um, later on in the race. We saw that he started to develop some transmission issues. He couldn't 
shift without affecting the anti stall on the car. So it ended up just kind of screwing up his whole race and he had to end up kind of retiring. That obviously was a heartbreaker. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of retired. Yeah, believe it or not, Halfway. that sucked. Because yeah. I think because Max <laughs> loves this track so much, he was just too early on catching the curve. And I believe it was the curves that caused that on his car. Because he was the first one. I'm talking, I don't know, he's, he is a really fast guy on this track. So he was, to me, he was riding the curve a little more than anybody else early on. So he developed the problem super early. Because after that, everybody started watching, you know, Obviously, a Mercedes that developer was the, you know, Lance uh, Stroll later on, but he was the first one to develop that problem that, you know, it's pretty much trickled down to a lot of the, a lot of more drivers. So Red Bull comes in with a lot of expectations um, this season. They, you know, everybody's, um, you know, written off Ferrari. I, I wonder if this is going to be something, you know, the reliability of that engine. I mean, I know that Christian Horner said it was like electrical issues when they, they interviewed him on the pit. Yeah. Where, I hope it's not something I mean, because we want to see a fight. We don't want to see Mercedes just steal you know, it again. Steal it, steal but it out again. It. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, um, but I, you know, Alvin did pretty good in the race too. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like the other thing with Max is that this is typically his home race before we ended up getting Zandvoort on the yes. calendar. So this is a place that he wants well, to obviously this come will in be and show out. Rebels home race yeah. as well. I, yeah. The, so doubled up. Uh, so from there, that was lap 11. Lap 18, Ricardo went out. I don't remember exactly what happened with him. His um, something similar. Uh, it seemed uh, it when, seemed like it, it, when it happened at first, it seemed like his car was stuck in gear. But I think Cyril Beatable, um, which is the team principal for Renault, said it was cooling problems with his car. cooling issue. Yeah. yeah, so they had to retire the car. Right. Which I, Danny Rick really has bad luck at. The first races of seasons. <laughs> Remember you know, Australia last yeah. year? He lost the front <laughs> wing. Yeah. No, and, he, and even when he was with Red Bull, he, he I think he had retired or something went wrong with it. Uh, in Australia. He yeah, said, but I know he lost the front, like <laughs> the first lap coming off the start. In 2019. In yeah. 2019, he lost the front wing and it was just like, forget about it. <laughs> it was a horrible day. So let's say he doesn't have good luck in his, in his home personal track. You know, Australia. He's, well, he's he doesn't first. have good luck in his first, the first, first race of the season. <laughs> uh, it's so sad. You want to see that guy at the top. His his personality is awesome, and he he's will, a really good. Him at the top will be a nice driver. thing for F one. Yeah, man. So there was that, and then uh, this was the start of kind of the issues and the warnings. Lance Stroll went out lap twenty one with the sensor issue. What? James Allison would come in on the radio for the, the two Mercedes drivers, and then you would hear it also for, for Perez that essentially it was a problem with the Mercedes and the teams that have the Mercedes engines that hitting the curbs too hard or just kind of jolting the car too hard resulted in issues with sensors within the car that would create problems for the car itself where it may lose power. And that's what ended up happening with Stroll. Yeah, this is a problem every year at the Red Bull Ring. The- this is a super fast track. Yes. So that means that you have this car at a super high speed, but the key is not only to go fast, but to stay within the track. So these drivers really lean on those curbs, but those curbs are punishing. No, remember so, the car is not made to be bouncing around. No, so the curves bounces all over the place. Exactly. So what you're what you're doing is that you're driving these cars, you're hitting these bumps, and the things jolt around. I think Williams also uh they came on the radio and and um they had a similar message just right. to watch out for the curbs because you don't want these sensors to Mercedes go Mercedes engine. Well, spoiler alert, later on in the race, George Russell had to retire for the same problems. Lap 51, he ended up engine failure. Same, It was the same sensor issue. Uh, but before then, Kevin Magnuson on lap 26 ended up having a front brake failure as he was fighting with, I believe it was Esteban Ocon, uh, yes. to make a, a right-hand turn. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was lap, uh, turn three. Yeah. That ended up causing a safety car, the first safety car of the race. Mm-hmm. And that led to basically everyone just coming in, getting a cheap pit stop. This is where things got interesting. This is where uh, things got a little fun. I like uh, the way Magnussen handled the car in the turn. Like he didn't just destroy the car. He made like a freaking 360 and that looked beautiful. <laughs> but <laughs> it did. <laughs> Listen, man, we've seen Drive to Survive. We've seen Gunther Steiner, how upset he gets. Why not with them, but with the whole team. I wouldn't want to deal with that guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I don't think it was the driver's fault. I think uh, it seemed like it was a disfailure. Grosjean had problems with his brakes too, so. 
I don't know, man. Like, Haas just can't get their stuff together. They they have a lot. They they always have seem to have. Well, this year they don't have a lot of promise, but uh, in the previous <laughs> years, no, with that they seem to have a lot of promise, and something always goes wrong. Last year was the whole tire thing that plagued them throughout the entire season, last side. to the point where they were actually one of the favorites last season to finish to win the best of the rest, yeah. and they wound up finishing up worse right worse. above worse the Williams. <laughs> Which yeah, because Willing is not probably sometimes considered best of the rest, anywhere in the rest. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> but the double stack by Mercedes, that was awesome. So, right. So going into the pit stops, Mercedes did a double stack where they had Bottas come in first. They had Hamilton slow down just a little bit so that they could be able to execute it properly. Uh, and it we went had, through flawless. Yeah, perfectly. The only... The only one that was a little different from everybody else pitting onto hards was Sergio Perez, who pitted onto mediums. But he's known specifically for his ability to save tires. And it was one of those things where your eyes perk up and it's like, oh, maybe this guy will be able to get to the end of this race on an advantageous tire now with good track position. What do you think, Yancy? Um, Yeah, I mean, uh, when uh, it was like 26, you can't doubt. Oh, well, well, before Mercedes we go deeper into that, you heard? Well, before we go deeper into that, mm -hmm. the Norris and Paris incident on the pit stop, that was a freaking close call. And I think if it would have been Max, they would have probably crashed because Max is not going to let nobody throw in the pit stop. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not, I, I mean, I, the thing is that what I really found, what you, you said about Paris, I'm not sure why he went on the mediums. Um, we still had over, f well, close to 50 laps left on the race or yeah. a little bit less than 50 laps left in the race. Everybody was going on 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 the what was it the hards? Yeah, yeah. they were going on the hards. Um, I I don't know what uh, I, I guess they were relying on on Paris. Paris is a master at managing tires, so yeah, he's always done well on that. You know, and I, but that seemed a bit of a stretch because then you get at the end with these tires, um, and. They're gonna drop and off. They're gonna drop off. Yeah. They're just you're not gonna have any grip going through the corner. So I I, I don't I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> he couldn't do much with, with Alvin. Right. No. Yeah. I mean So I mean from there it pretty much remained chalk. It was bought us Hamilton and then either Albon or or Perez right behind them. Uh until until it was lap uh 55-ish, where essentially our, our good friend Kimi. <laughs> his tire just left him alone. They, I, for some reason, his his front right tire just popped off and started rolling on its own. And uh, Kimi was on three wheels and essentially just crashed out because of that. I want to know what the explanation was for that. It seemed like they didn't put the wheel on right. Because it wasn't like the tethers came off. The te I mean, they yeah, didn't no even one. the suspension didn't even come off. No, the, it was the, just the like the tire off, just off. dropped off. Yeah. But um, before the Kimi incident, Beto again can't handle pressure spinning. That's right. Not to mention <laughs> Lap thirty one. I was he, who did he collide? I was hoping. Yeah, he's not gonna remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have it here in, in my notes. Oh, you were trying to skip it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because what else am I going to say? I mean, that he can't handle pressure. Say the truth. I mean, and then uh, to, for it to be against Carlos Sainz, uh, which replaced. is the driver that's going to replace him at yes. Ferrari, <laughs> was mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I don't know. It's sad because a, a driver of Cal, uh, a driver of Vettel's caliber, for him to, you know, you would. I think the expectations were high for him this season because literally he has. He doesn't have to follow team orders. He doesn't, yeah. you know, he doesn't necessarily have to play by Ferrari's rules. He can literally, he has, if he has have, does have a decent car, he can show what kind of driver he is so he can stay on the grid. I hope it doesn't keep going. Um, you don't want to see him off the grid. I think he's a great character. I think he's a great driver when he's on. But it, it, I don't know. It, it just, it's more of the same. I mean... Again, I said he can't handle pressure. Like all he had was a little bit of pressure. He wasn't even pushed. It wasn't out. even that bad. Exactly. He went. He, but it it wasn't it wasn't a move that he shouldn't even made. He had no. He there was no room to make that to make that that pass. That so overtake. we could we could easily say that better love spinning out because every time somebody puts a move, well, it spins out. I think that's <laughs> evident in the past two years. <laughs> I mean, he spinned out and he looked like he was already losing control of the car before he hit yes. Carlos Sainz. Did they touch? 
Yeah, they did touch. Okay. They did touch. And I think that they even had a bit of damage on that car. But, I mean, he fell back all the way to, I think, 15th place. He made it back up, though. I, I got to say, it's just weird to see um, a former world champion just kind of succumb to pressure the way that he did. The car was nowhere. So there's really no expectations coming into this race, into the race and itself. That's what I'm saying. It's like, there's, what pressure can you have when you know? Ferrari basically hedged their bets and they said that they were nowhere. Yeah. And they've been saying that since testing, since the whole coronavirus thing started. And then they come into the weekend. They weren't very strong in practice. There's no pressure, bro. There's no pressure. You're not a favorite to win the championship. <laughs> You know, you don't, you know, you know, you're leaving the team, so you don't necessarily have to keep that seat. Maybe the pressure is this is that he's trying to get a me. seat from, he's trying to get a seat next year on the grid from, from another team. But I mean, you know, just play it safe. Make sure you get maximum points. You're yeah. definitely going to be in a top 10 running. I don't see the, I don't see why, why do that. It, it reminds me of, um, Singapore 20, 2017 when, when, uh, him and Kimmy, Sandwich Max for stopping at the beginning, dude. You had the championship lead. Why are you making such an aggressive move yeah. to the to the inside? It doesn't make any sense to me. Just stay ahead and go, you know. And even like that, even if you lose the lead to Max at that race, you know, you still have the faster car, and you still have a points lead because Hamilton's behind you. Right. Like this is stuff that a world champion should be making. Um, or he should be thinking about. You know, I, I, I don't want to say it in this race, but those are mistakes that Hamilton later on in the season doesn't make. Yeah, yeah, you know, even though he made a ton of mistakes here. Yeah, like you guys mentioned at the start, this is a shortened season. Every point is going to count that much more. Yeah. Uh, but as a result of the tire essentially just flying right off of uh, okay. Kimmy's car, so we I had know another we go back to Kimmy. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> we had a uh, we had another safety car come out lap fifty five. Uh, at this point, we watched the race together. I'm screaming at the TV. Everybody's got to go on softs. And that's the way to get to the end of the race in a competitive fashion flying flying 16 laps left let's go let's do it uh only one team one driver went on to the softs and that was red bulls alexander albon he goes on to the softs. i thought that was an awesome call that fantastic call because that is the right move mm -hmm. uh both mercedes cars stay out sergio Perez stays out uh he was still on his mediums mm -hmm. the two mercedes cars were still on on hards from 27 laps ago or whatever. Perez was a dead duck at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was a He was a dead duck at that point. So when you when you get that restart and you have and you have a a, a faster car with so, with better tires or fresher tires, you you're going to get past eventually. Right. At that point it was Bottas 1, Hamilton 2, and then Albon just happened to pass uh Sergio Perez to get into third place right before the safety car came out. So at the restart, we were just I expected Albon to just go crazy, be able to overtake both uh, Hamilton and Bottas, similar to uh, China 2018 with Danny Ricardo on softs, just blasting through the field. I, I didn't hear that. I, I knew that he was going to take over, take uh, the racing point. He's going to take Perez. Yeah, yeah, we knew that. I didn't expect them to go as hard. I mean, you expect them, but I didn't think that it was going to happen like the way it happened with, with Hamilton. But it looked like he was going to get by Hamilton pretty easy. I got a question for you, but all of this happened before. It was a safety car of Russell that created all this, not the Kimi safety car. The Kimi safety car is what allowed. No, no, no. It was the same. It was because Russell, Russell went out first, then Kimi came. Out. No, no, I'm right. I think I'm right. All of this happened on the Russell safety car, not the Kimi. Not the Kimi safety car. Correct. So George Russell ended up having a safety car on lap 51. Yes, that was when the when Grosjean actually the, went out. That was the engine well. failure that we were talking about earlier. No, no, no. Look, fifty one was Ruff, Russell pulls over. That's when he went out. Fifty five is the Kimi. Is the Kimi accident? But the Russell safety car is what caused what Album caused to be ahead Album of Paris. To switch. Yes. Okay. You're right. You to switch correct. to the soft, yes. and the Kimi was the one that that caused. Correct. Yeah. 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 So okay. we kind of we kind of jump a couple of things that happened there. Yeah. But it was that it was a you know. At the Kimi safety car is when Albon happened to be just ahead of Paris. He was already on soft because of the Russell safety car. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're right. So then at the Kimi safety car, everyone just kind of stayed status quo. Nobody wanted to give up the track. Yeah, position. nobody it was. The only thing that went in, I think, was signs. And he lost like three positions when he did that. Lap 61, Albon attacking Hamilton. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Hamilton doesn't like this guy. Eh? I don't know. 
It's like it's, a re, it's like watching the same movie. It's like watching um, what was it, Brazil all over again? Yeah, yeah. Same. It was almost the same way in Brazil twenty nineteen. <laughs> it was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was no. It yeah. was in Brazil. Hamilton went to pass in this one album. No, pass. I know, but what I'm saying is that you know, anytime Albin is on for a podium, <laughs> Hamilton comes in and just he better stay away from him <laughs> if he wants a podium. Wow, <laughs> and you don't expect those kind of moves from Flop Hamilton. Out, but, uh, you know, you we know we know it. Hamilton wasn't going to give it up easy, but yeah. we obviously don't want a collision. I was upset. Yeah, I like, wanted to see Albin on the podium. Me too. I didn't want. I didn't want a collision. You know, I, I, to I, me, I, Hamilton just gave up a, a podium and points. Yeah, I mean, more points. That was so, so upsetting because I, I really, I, I told you guys that that Albon is good. I don't think he's up to the level as Max, but he's pretty good to be driving in the top team. And he was about to prove it, and it just today. <laughs> and he, he, well, just, he, could, he could try it again next week. <laughs> let's put it, let's put it this way: in 2019, oh. Gasly was still in the Red Bull. Max Verstappen lapped him. <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> him in that race let's remember that yes so yeah, yeah, yeah. Albon's already much better off he's actually fighting top three mm-hmm. so as a result of Albon spinning out or being spun out by Lewis Hamilton Hamilton receives a five second penalty which That's crazy yeah which uh we knew he was, he was gonna he was gonna get a penalty for it but with on, a man. race as tight as it was because of so many safety cars it became a major issue where, we, I mean, we all know at hammer time came out at the end for Lewis Hamilton to just just try and build up that five second lead to keep him from falling into like, cars, yeah. yeah six or seven. Lewis didn't deliver hammer time. No, he did not. He Lando did not. Did. <laughs> Lando, Lando hammer. So uh, Sergio Perez ends up also getting a penalty for uh, going beyond track limits. No, there was a speeding in the pit lane. Speeding. There was the speeding yeah. in the pit lane. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, then at the, the end, ending was super crazy. The, the, at the end of the race, it was just confusing. It was there was just so much, so much stuff going, stuff going on. on. But those are the races that I like. Exactly. Yeah. So the Paris penalty. We had Kvyat also had yeah. had a left rear tire. His his tire just gave out, and he had to drive off. But they didn't call a safety car. They just ended up finishing the race. At the end of the race, Lando Norris with literally the last on on lap seventy. You could they showed the graphic where he was. Over five seconds behind Hamilton, which yes. would mean that the penalty wouldn't even have helped him out. They told him over the radio to just, you know, hit it, just go crazy. Send it, send it. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he must have turned it up to 12 out of 10 and just went nuts. Set the fastest lap, was able to close the gap and get to 4.8 seconds behind Hamilton, which ended up having him finish ahead of Hamilton. And then the other surprise was that Leclerc climbed his way up all the way from starting on <laughs> some <up>, baby <laughs> starting seventh Charlie! place made it all the way up yeah, your boy <laughs> made it all the way up to second place so the final for uh the austrian grand prix was valtteri botas first uh charles leclerc in second place and lando norris the milkman delivers <laughs> third place his first podium and actually the second consecutive podium for mclaren so Two things. <laughs> second, the second podium. Yeah, yeah. They ended up getting Brazil. Carlos Sainz had the podium. And what happened to the Abu Dhabi race? Oh, you're right. So, <laughs> <laughs> let's forget about that. Yeah, let's, forget about that. <laughs> let's forget about that. That race is only good when there's like a title design. Exactly. Yeah. There's like a no, no, no brainer that one. <laughs> and there's no action either in during those races. In that race. But yeah. So yeah, we could forget about it. Was nothing happened in that race. Yeah, <laughs> so, how great was Leclerc? Um, Would you Leclerc, let him drive on the day today? Uh, I don't know. I don't. How think about so. you? I think I think we can give that to Lando. For us, I would say my driver of the day was, I would say, Lando Norris. Yeah. yeah. Yours, Ruben? It'll be Lando. I'm sure. I'm just happy he got fastest lap and got a podium. Listen. But Leclerc wasn't bad. Le- he climbed up and he fought. Leclerc. Without the penalty. Did what a, what a world champion does. Yeah, this guy has a lot. Yo, know, since since Leclerc signed okay. with Ferrari, this guy has been a, a Leclerc no, group. Leclerc, <laughs> keep, Leclerc keeps his head down. Yeah. And goes to battle. Goes to battle. And when the chips are down, he manages to pull out a great result. 
It is what champions do. <laughs> okay. When so not- <laughs> yes, he will be a future world champion. I'm just saying that Ferrari's in good hands <laughs> with Charles Leclerc. <laughs> okay. They were in good hands with Fernando Alonso, and they didn't deliver a championship. For exactly. Him. They almost won. It's the car he's got to be worried about. Well, he has listen, to have the right package. But come on, man, are you kidding me? Not cheating. Nowhere package. they got a, and they came in second place. He, he has to come have on, a, give credit where credit is due, boys. Today he did very good. He yes. did awesome. He, but it's not the first time that he does awesome. What I'm saying is, give we also credit. need him to be on a, you know, good card, non cheating. <laughs> well, look, I won't let that one stop, go for a while. Stop. Yeah, if I can, if no duh. <laughs> look, up, <laughs> duh. Anyways, look up but, front. He uh, ended up dragging the car onto. It, it would have been a podium regardless of the penalty to Hamilton. Uh, it was a worse car than the McLaren and the Racing Point and the Red Bull. And the Mercedes. And he got him on the podium. And he still got them on the podium. So there is kind of second some, place on the podium. <laughs> there Excuse is credibility me, to what uh, <laughs> what Yancy is saying. You know, that it's that grit that I was talking about last week that he has not really shown so far this his career that, you know, you're starting to see a little bit more of putting the head down and just driving. Um, I, I'm excited for the future of F1. Oh, no, I'm very excited. And you can and it was showcased in this race. Um, There's one thing I didn't like about this race. Though. What? The freaking feed, man. The race director. Come on, man. Scream the replays for later. Show me the back and forth action. Like, for example, there is a lot of things we missed that should have been shown live. I don't want to see a replay. I want to see it happening. You're coming back from a replay and freaking, right. you know, take, you know, people take, overtaking each other and stuff like that. Right. We don't see I it. I think we've been complaining about that for years now. Yeah. And it's, you know, and I don't know what it's falling on deaf ears. They, ha- they haven't gotten better. You know, I'm, I'm, I see overtakes as a replay instead of when they're happening. Yeah. You know, and it's it just sucks because that's what we want to see. Even if it's like a battle for like 14th place, we want to see people overtaking, you know, so. Right. But to get back to what Yancey was saying, he's right. The future was on display between Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris, Alex Albon. Remember, Max Verstappen went out, so he Mm would have been part of that whole thing. You know, I mean, the, I think the only one of the old guard holding firm is Lewis Hamilton, but I don't see anybody dethroning him anytime soon. I <laughs> know Lewis is still, you know, Lewis on is top Lewis, of his game, but um, but he is. I mean, if, once these cars get on somewhat equal footing with the cost cap coming in, I think you're going to see a lot of battles because it's a lot of talent on the grid. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of talent on the grid, and they're not all on you know on the same team or anything like that. So that's uh, when it's going to come. It's going to be, be very exciting. The yeah. good drivers, the drivers that perform, they're going to excel. You know, the Charles yeah. Leclerc, the Lewis Hamilton, Norris. I think he just be a, needs to be a little more aggressive. He has he has the you know the the speed. He just have to be a little more aggressive. Match is going to probably surpass yeah, a I, bunch of people I, because Match is super I, kill it. I think Lando showed what he's made of this race, man. To to to. So not only keep be fighting in the top ten throughout the race yeah, with points, would. right? Um, when they told him to go, oh no, yeah, yeah, he got the fastest lap, and he got you know, and he got a podium. But to be on the top, you don't need to be told to go. You need to just go and freaking fight. No, I got and you. Obviously, but he, he he punched it up when he told him, "Come on, let's go." But how many this. how many times have you seen a driver where he the, you know, and even with experienced drivers, you tell them. Yo, go, chips are do down. This. Yeah, chips this, are down. This Let's is, do this. This Let's is your this. podium right they, now. Go take yeah, it. Or, or, or they lock up into a corner or they go off the corner or they go offline. Mm-hmm. Like, th- it happens. And and for you to do that, you, you can't underestimate that. You know, that's what that's what, th- you know, these little differences is what makes you a champion. Of course. You know, and we've seen and then doing those little things consistently is what makes you a cut above the rest. <laughs> Right. Gotta so, be a winner, man. Yeah. No, I agree. We talk about the future of F1. And then there's also, he went out with the uh, the sensor issue. But George Russell, you know, he was holding his own in a Williams. He was moving. Granted, everybody was like crashing out or failing out. But <laughs> he was still moving. He would have finished in the points in this race. I firmly believe it. Um, but yeah, the future looks really, what was the, really uh, bright. How many finishers... Out of 20, straight. it felt like everybody was out. <laughs> I think we only had like 12 or 13. Let's see. Kvyat was out. Alban uh, did finish. And then, yeah, <laughs> it was 13, like, what, 13 finishers out. out of 20. 
13 finishes 13 out of 20. I felt like I was watching a, a, a rained out race or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's like everybody was out. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess it, that's the like um you know, we haven't raced in a while. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong. It'll get better. Um but it was a fun race either way. It didn't look like it was going to be a fun race. I was just excited to see it because it was the first race in a long time. But for it to play out the way it did, I had a great time. When I mean, I uh, you guys we saw the race together. Um the scream that I let out when the car <laughs> <laughs> went into second, and then when uh, when uh, when Lando got that fastest lap, that was awesome. Man. Yeah, when, that's when, what that's what that's why we love to watch. It. When Leclerc went into second, you just woke up. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, oh. yeah. I, I haven't I hadn't been that excited in a long time. Um, I mean, we're always gonna do another um, podcast before the next race. What what do you guys? For C, as far as do you think the pecking order will be the same for the next race? Because it's going to be at the same, at the same, uh, at the same track. I see. We're going to have. I believe we're going to have a lot of the that issue with the sensors. They're going to be probably working on really hard uh, Mercedes, and then hand it down to their, uh, I guess, engine uh, customers. Um, I anticipate that. Um, for example, Racing Point, Lance Stroll, who was having a great weekend by himself, you know, he will be competitive and will be able to hopefully complete the race if he doesn't crash out. I really thought that they were going to, I mean, they were on pace to finish the race in the points. Um, both cars. Both cars, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it sucks that, that Stroll went out. Paris just was very unfortunate what happened to him doing. Yeah, yeah. speeding in the pit lane. Was, yeah. That yeah, cost yeah, him yeah, dearly. Yeah. And I think also that got him a little bit discouraged on the actual race because that, be, that began to trickle down and he started just falling off after that. You know, when he had the penalty and the tires started falling off because he was in the mediums and blah, blah, blah. Like I expect McLaren to be, again, similarly competitive. In 2019, and I had said it earlier, Lando Norris was, he also qualified really well and he was fighting at the start of the race before, you know, he started having issues with the car. He was doing pretty well on on his own. So I anticipate that next week he'll be able to do the same thing. Maybe not get a podium, but he'll be fighting at the top there. So that that's Racing Point. Racing Point and McLaren will be battling it out for that mm-hmm. best of the rest. Next week Actually, week. maybe even third in the constructors or second, maybe. Who knows? Alfa <laughs> <laughs> um, had a really good day today, too. Yeah, up until the end, they yeah, were they were the end, they really had a, fighting. They were really fighting until the end, and, and you know, if I mean, we always watched uh, the the top of the grid, the top three teams, but um, throughout but, the season, so was that if, it's going to be another team added to the top, not the top three anymore? Going to be maybe the top four? No, I, I think this team's going to excel out. I think it's going to be a top one, and then everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you have three groups. I mean, you're going to have um, obviously Mercedes is fighting at the top. They're in a league of their own, and there's nobody I think that can. No, I say this for them, but take the I was in Mercedes, team. Ferrari, Red Bull. Is anybody else going to join him this year? No, absolutely to not. Be, no, uh, not even close. I think that the the favorite to me to do the best of the rest, and for anybody who um who who's new to F one, um we talk about obviously the top teams, the midfield and the back marker, which is the, the three different groups. The top teams are Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull. Um, those are the teams that are expected to be on top. Um, they're faster than any than everybody else. And then you have like a mid group, which is this year would be like Renault, um, Racing Point. Uh, who else? Um, Renault. Yeah. Re- well, I said Renault, Racing Point, uh, McLaren. Uh, McLaren, and you could uh-huh. even throw in uh, Alpha. <laughs> yeah, Alpha Tari in there, um, and maybe Alpha Romeo, but they're more to the back. That battle, that midfield battle. Is fun to watch because when it gets to the end of the season, there's only a few points um, separating dif- separating them, yeah. you know. And then you know after this, we'll go into the point system and how it works, mm-hmm. so we can explain to to people how um, how the um, how the point system works and how how points are scored. Um, but then then you have the black markers, which is Williams, 
of this year's Williams. Uh, Alfa Romero is very close to being a back marker. And Haas, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, and those teams, they, they always fight off for points, but it's important to fight for those points because the order that those teams finish um, designates the amount of prize money that they get at the end of the season. And therefore, they take that prize money and develop their cars more. So the That's more money you get, the more you can develop your car, you have a higher budget. Um, as far as the point system, how it works, um, th- let me just go down the scale. If you get first place in a race, you get 25 points. Second place gets 18 points. And by the way, 25 points and 18 points, that's the biggest point differential in points that you can get. So it's a seven point differential. Um, third place gets 16. Uh, fourth place gets 12. Fifth place gets 10. Sixth place gets eight. Seventh place gets six. Eighth place gets four. Ninth place gets two. And 10th place gets one. If you finish in the top 10, you're getting points. If you finish below the top 10, you're getting nothing. Now, as far as the constructors goes, whatever your bo- your two drivers gets points in that race get added together, and those are the constructors' values. And let's also mention fastest lap in the race also the gets, top yes. yes, within the top 10 also gets one yeah. point. Exactly. So, and this race was Lando Norris. Lando Norris. Right? Yeah. So, Lando Norris, for just his result, he got 16 points because he finished third, and he got fastest lap, so now he has 17 points. So... Which in that in that scale right there, you're just below second one place. point below second right. place, and then so currently as things stand, uh, after this race, uh, the top three are Valtteri Bottas, Charles Leclerc, which eight, uh, which got 18 points, and Lando Norris got 16 points. Obviously, um, that's the the result, right? the, the 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 race, uh, the results of the race. As far as teams are concerned, this is where it gets interesting. The teams standing. <laughs> As far as teams are concerned, obviously you're going to expect Mercedes up there with 37 points. Of course. <laughs> But at this point in the season, when were you ever going to expect that the second place team was going to be McLaren nah, with 26 points? That's a construct. Yes. Yeah. Ferrari with 19 points. Red Bull ninth, zero points. Wow. That's crazy. In their own home. And they were the favorite to contend with Mercedes. So, I mean, obviously, it's the first race of the season, but we'll see where everything pans out. So, I mean, I hope you guys get a better understanding of how the point system works and why uh, it's very important for you to for any team to finish in the top 10 because you got to get points. And if you DNF, you get nothing. <laughs> you get nothing. So and, and that's what happened with Red Bull today. Red Bull max DNF. And Albon spun Albon out, spun out and with well, pleasure with Hamilton. Thank you, Lewis Hamilton. Um, Albon spun out, finished below the top 10, so he got nothing. Um, did he get to finish the race? Yeah, yeah, he did because he was having problems as well getting, getting, getting it together. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think I think that his problems were just based on that he was he had to push a little bit harder. Gotcha. Maybe he was trying to push to get into the points just to get that one point, which actually Vettel did. Uh, Finish in tenth, so he did get one point. <laughs> um, but Spinderella. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, it, it'll be interesting. Uh, Recl- McLaren. I don't believe McLaren is going to finish second. No, uh, that's but uh, they look like they are a team best that's going to up and up. Man. They'll be best of the rest. Yeah, and I, you know, they're getting. I mean, Carlos Sainz is a very good driver. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, they're, they're getting those Mercedes engines that season, along with uh, Danny Rick. Oh, I boy. think that's, that's going to be a good um, – that's going to be a team to watch for the future. Do you think Carlos Sainz regrets the move to Ferrari? Probably, no. no, I don't no think they're always so. going to be competitive. Listen, but Ferrari, Ferrari has a huge budget. Ferrari has a budget of $450 million to spend on their car. Uh, that's for now. They're for gonna now. put in the, uh, the cap. Yeah, the but, that, but but I mean, the, they're gonna put in the cost cap, but they're still gonna have those resources there, and they're and they're a very experienced team. It's not about cost; it's about you know, it's about the personnel that you have. You know, uh, what the cost cap will do is, yeah, you're gonna limit the budget, but it's also gonna exasperate the the talent that you have on your team as far as engineering and things like that to build that car. So, gotcha. You know, what else uh, we got for this week, Wells? That uh, that pretty much sounds like it. That sounds like a good place to wrap it up. 
Yeah, man. I, I'm glad that we got the first race out of the season. First yeah. race done out of the season. We got another race next weekend. Super exciting for that one. You too. know, and uh, the Let's season's off and running. Mistakes being uh, being recovered from next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, it'll be interesting to see what kind of podium we It'll be nice at. if, like, Lewis even drops the even record. Further. You know? I'm just, the listen, Bottas I'm, record. Because Bottas brought, you know, brought the record for the fastest lap. So, imagine Lewis. Killing that next week. Now, I was Whoa. hoping that Lewis would finish even worse next year to see him have to come back from a deficit. That would be nice. Like you said, this was the first time since 2014 that Lewis Hamilton isn't He's leading. not leading in points. Yeah. In points to start the race. Uh, the season. <laughs> the season. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what they said in the race. Yeah. No. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. No, because Vettel was ahead in, in, in 2017, 2017 and 2018. 2018. And 2018. But not... After the, now the first race, yeah, yeah of course yeah, after Australia. Australia. Okay, I think you. I think to, you. No, no, but the, no, they said that in the race. Well, we have to double check that. But yeah, well, listen, sometimes those guys are wrong. There's been plenty of times they've been <laughs> wrong. <laughs> All right, boys. Anything else? Nah, man. This is good. I uh, I can't wait till next week. Yeah. Is, yes. Uh, yeah. This was a this was a like a jolt of energy, and uh, I can't wait to feel this again. This was awesome. Yeah, next week will be super exciting because. I know Mercedes is not resting this whole week because they're going to take care of that problem by next week. <laughs> well, that's one thing that you can count on with Mercedes. They, when something goes wrong with them, which I don't think much went wrong with them. I think it was more driver errors than anything. Listen, I think they will fix that problem. You know how they're going to fix it, right? No. They're going to put duct tape all over the freaking connectors. <laughs> and they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Super glue it. <laughs> Make sure they all have clips. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun today was good it was a, I was on race yeah man yeah alright awesome. with that said uh, we'll catch you guys next week bye guys perfect thank you guys for listening to us this week uh, don't forget to check us out on social media. You can look for us on Instagram at Jump the Start Podcast, at uh, Twitter at JTSR Podcast, and on YouTube, uh, Jump the Start Racing Podcast. See you guys next week.